Tropical Storm Brett has the potential of making landfall as a hurricane somewhere around the Caribbean in the very near future. Take a look at the current water vapor imagery and we clearly see that this storm is intensifying. We see a lot more convective activity and rotation around the center of circulation compared to yesterday and the National Hurricane Center has detected that this storm system has developed a closed center of circulation which typically means that this storm has reached the, ca um, the category of being considered a tropical tropical storm where the wind speed is now over 39 miles per hour and the, we're now seeing a well-defined center of circulation and organized center of circulation for a heat engine to develop and this to continue to intensify and we do see just to the west of this storm there isn't a lot of dry air and the wind shear isn't very strong either so this will likely continue to intensify as this moves further eastward we do still see a little bit of a stronger southerly flow that's anywhere between 15 to 20 knots that's steering the outflow clouds further northward however we have seen an improvement when it comes to the outflow further southward where now we're seeing the uh, the, cl the outflow clouds move a little bit further southward which shows that this storm is getting better circulation in the upper levels which will enhance the storm's intensity because the more air that's diverted in the upper levels away from the center of circulation the more rising air there would be which would lower the pressure along the surface and as a result we'll see an intensifying storm and that's what we're seeing right now and this is only expected to continue to intensify unfortunately as this approaches the caribbean and of course we have this other disturbance um just to the west i mean just to the east of tropical storm brett invest 93l which also has a good chance of developing into a tropical cyclone in the near future. Here's the amount of wind shear that's currently over Tropical Storm Brett, which is located right around this area. And we do see the wind shear is relatively light right over the center of circulation where the wind, where the upper level winds are anywhere between 10 to 15 knots, which is considered favorable for tropical cyclone intensification. We do see that the upper level winds quickly intensify if you were to move just to the north of this storm. But right now it's in a small area where the wind shear is just light enough and and that's expected to continue as this moves further eastward towards the Caribbean islands, which is a major concern that we could potentially see a hurricane in our hands in the very near future. So we have seen a pretty significant shift when it comes to the exact trajectory of this storm, especially with the GFS model, because in prior GFS model runs, including the ones over the past several days, we um, the GFS model was leaning more towards steering the storm further northward and completely avoiding the Caribbean islands. But unfortunately, the GFS model has shifted its forecasts to the point where now it wants to bring this storm towards the Caribbean islands, which could bring direct impacts to um, let's the Leeward Islands or potentially Puerto Rico as well and even the Dominican Republic could get involved with this storm if it were to um, maintain its strength this far to the west which still has yet to be seen right now the GFS model expects a decent amount of intensification but not much we do see that this mainly hovers around the 996 millibar range as this approaches the Caribbean and the key thing that you'll probably notice with this storm as this moves further westward is that it's very asymmetrical we're seeing all the moisture on the western side I mean the eastern side of the storm and it's fairly dry on the west or uh, on the western side and the reason being is because this storm at least the low level center is moving very quick the lower level winds are um during, especially during this time of the year this early in the hurricane season tend to be too fast for tropical storms to develop right now it's one of the rare times where we're seeing uh, potentially two tropical storms develop in the main development region in fact i I think Tropical Storm Brett is the most eastward tropical cyclone that has developed in the northern Atlantic in history for the month of June, which really goes to show that this is um, this scenario we're talking about right now is extremely rare. And however, and the reason and part of the reason why it's so rare is because the lower level winds tend to be too strong and the overall wind shear tends to be too strong for many tropical waves to develop in the main development region this early in the hurricane season. Right now, it seems like this storm will be in just in a small enough area 
area to the point where it's going to avoid the strong upper level winds however the strong lower level winds will still be there which will keep this storm asymmetrical when it comes to the moisture as well as the center of circulation because we do see that the moisture is lagging behind where the low level center is and that's due to the fact that the lower level winds are much stronger taking a look at um the forecasted winds um through um through different levels of the atmosphere including the upper level uh, the upper levels of the atmosphere we do see that the winds are stronger along the surface quite a bit stronger and we don't see and while we don't see the wind direction well we do see the wind direction change a little bit as you move further um into the upper levels we don't really see the wind um stay as strong which means that the clouds which are of course located in the upper levels are moving slower than the low level center where the low level center is being pushed by the strong lower level winds which is the reason why the storm might be a little bit lopsided and asymmetrical as this approaches the caribbean which would weaken um, which would put a limit on the intensification of this storm because of course a tropical cyclone needs to have the um the amount of energy consolidated over one area if it's too spread out like we're seeing right here where the energy energy is where a lot of the energy in the upper levels are located a little bit further eastward while the lower level energy is located a bit further westward it's a lot more difficult for all the energy to converge and create a, a, an efficient enough heat engine for the wind speed to increase the convection to increase because the energy is going moving all over the place away from the center of circulation and it, it isn't in one consolidated very organized area and that's why the gfs model doesn't expect this to strengthen as much however it's also good to keep in mind that since this is a very rare storm for the month of june and the gfs and the european model don't really have much historical data when it comes to storms like this because of course we never seen a tropical cyclone form this far east in the month of june this there could easily be um um confusions with the computer models regarding the exact trajectory as well as the exact strength of this storm as it approaches the caribbean because it never experienced in all in all the historical data it's gathered over the years it's never experienced a storm developing this far eastward so this could maybe be a possibility that the computer models are overestimating how strong the lower level winds will be and might be weakening the storm a little bit too month uh too much for the month of june but we have to wait and see i'll still lean i'll still of course give more confidence to what computer models are stating but since this is a once almost a once in a lifetime type storm we're seeing developing this far east there could definitely be some confusions with the computer models or mistakes regarding a storm like this more than what you typically see with a regular storm. So we're going to need to see if the computer models are correct in this scenario. It would make sense if it were correct because we, of course, do see stronger wind shear and stronger lower level winds in the month of June, which would weaken the storm. But we just have to wait and see. Right now, the GFS model still expects a tropical storm to move through the leeward island islands as well as puerto rico and the Dominican republic so you still need to pay close attention to this but it seems like the national hurricane center is leaning a little bit further from what the gfs and the european model are stating when it comes to a storm like this due to the fact that it's um outside of the faster lower level winds there isn't much that's expected to slow this storm down we see that the moisture there's just enough moisture and not enough dry air in training the storm to the point where it'll ha it'll have a major effect when it comes to weakening this storm there's a little bit of dry air but it won't be a ton and if we were to take a look at the upper level winds which i'll show you right now we see that the upper level winds are expected to maintain fairly light as this moves further eastward, which makes me believe that we're going to see a storm that's stronger than what the GFS and the European model are stating due to the fact that the upper level winds are weak, there isn't a lot of dry air. The only inhibiting factor would be the fact that the lower level winds are a bit faster, which will keep the lower level, the low pressure system a little bit further westward than the moisture, which could create a little bit um, of um, which could like pretty much separate a lot of the energy away from the center circulation, which could potentially weaken it. But outside of that, the conditions don't seem that 
um, don't seem that unfavorable as this moves further eastward. So that could be concerning because that could mean that it'll strengthen a lot more than what the computer models are stating. But let me show you guys a European model right now. We clearly see that the European model isn't expecting much wind shear either, which is definitely a major concern. If we were to take a look at what the European model is forecasting, we do see that the European model is expecting a fairly similar um, track with this storm. We do see that it's moving towards the south. The wind shear is fairly light. And we do see that Invest 93L in the European model scenario is expected to develop into a tropical storm, which is also very rare for the month of June. But we do see that the European model expects us to eventually dissipate by the time this approaches the Caribbean. And the reason why is clearly due to the fact that the European model also expects the lower level winds to be a little bit too strong to the point where the low pressure system will move away from a lot of the moisture and convective activity for this to develop a well-organized and well-consolidated center of circulation where all the energy is focused around the low pressure system but we do see with the lower with the lower level winds too fast the low pressure system moves a little bit too fast for the moisture so the energy is diverted and is a little bit more elongated which would weaken the storm and that's why the european model expects this to dissipate but again the european model has a bigger bias when it comes to dissipating storms especially this early in the hurricane season and again it's never experienced a storm this developing this far to the east so there certainly could be mistakes when it comes to forecasting this um, storm from the two most reliable computer models but it is expected that it should move in this general area thanks to the steering flows that's pretty certain the strength is definitely a little bit more uncertain but it is expected that the lower level flow will be a little bit too fast for this to become a very powerful storm However, what I mean from of, of about this becoming a powerful storm, I mean anywhere, let's say, more than a Category 2, like the GFS model was initially anticipating with the prior runs, I still do believe that this will strengthen into a hurricane because, like I said, there isn't a lot that's going to inhibit this storm. There isn't a lot of dry air. The upper level winds are relatively light. Um, the lower level winds will be a bit too strong for this energy to consolidate and stay very well organized as it moves further westward, but it won't be enough to prevent this storm from shutting likely into a hurricane so the caribbean islands definitely need to watch out for potential hurricane impacts as we approach this weekend so in the prior GFS model runs, it was expected that Tropical Storm Brett would move further northward and miss out on the Caribbean. But it seems like the GFS model has detected that there's going to be a, ridge, a stronger ridge than they initially anticipated right just to the northwest of this storm that will keep it from being deterred from this trough as this trough is it. Um, dig digging down deep enough to, to divert the lower level winds from more of a southerly direction to steer this out to sea. So unfortunately, the Caribbean is likely to get impacted as it seems like all the computer models have, have reached a good level of certainty that there's going to be a strong ridge just to the northwest of this storm, which will bring tropical storm Brett or potentially hurricane Brett towards the Caribbean, which would definitely be a major concern. And we, um, however, for Invest 93L, there is a more likely shot this will move out to sea since this trough you see right here is expected to dip down and weaken this ridge um, as it approaches as it moves further eastward and weaken it enough to a point where this trough could pull this storm out to sea rather than moving towards the Caribbean, which would certainly be good news. And I'll say it's the most likely scenario for Invest 93L that this trough will dig down south enough to the point where it'll steer this storm out to sea. And we clearly see the same thing with the European model where this ridge is a little bit too strong for this to move further northward and for this trough to dig in. However, it's more likely that Invest 93L will move further northward thanks to this trough expecting to erode this ridge um, by the time this approaches the Caribbean to a point where it could pick it up and move it out to sea. Here are what the current ensemble members are stating and many of them are agreeing that this should move 
um, just south of Puerto Rico and potentially the Dominican Republic. But some computer models are expecting it to eventually turn to northward because, like I said, the ridge that's expected to be the main steering flow of this storm system is expected to erode once a trough located in the extreme northern portion of the Atlantic is expected to erode this trough. So it could allow for an area where this storm would be able to move further northward, which would certainly not be very good news for Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic in Haiti since you guys it will be more likely you'll get directly impacted if this ridge were to erode and this trough were expected to steer this um steer the storm further northward we're just gonna have to wait and see how much exactly the ridge will erode the trough to determine when it'll make that turn further northward and here what the model intensity the ensemble members are stating when it comes to the intensity of this storm we do see that quite a bit of them want to develop into hurricane status while a couple of them want to develop this um just as a tropical storm not really strengthening it into a hurricane however i do believe that it's more likely this will develop into a hurricane because i do believe the conditions will be favorable enough despite the stronger lower level winds for this to maintain just enough of a solid center of circulation and just enough energy circulating around it for this to develop into a category one hurricane at the very least. Let me show you guys the 500 millibar um, geopotential height anomaly forecast once more from the European model to really show you guys what will determine the track of these next two storm systems. So like I said, this ridge will be the main steering flow and this low pressure system is expected to move westward along with this ridge. However, how deep this trough digs in um, towards this ridge and how much this trough right here um, um, erodes this ridge will be key in determining when it'll take that turn for northward. We do see that by the time Invest 93L or what will likely become Tropical Storm Sydney moves further eastward, this ridge will completely erode and move further westward, which will mean that this trough will move southward, dig in just enough for this storm to have an open lane to move further northward. It won't happen with Tropical storm brent most likely since this ridge is pretty much um taking over much of the northern atlantic for this to have a chance to move further northward but when this um ridge erodes will be definitely key in t determining when um tropical storm brent or hurricane brent will move further northward so we're gonna need to pay close attention to that in uh, in the very near future so here's my overall forecast when it comes to her potential Hurricane Brett and Sydney. Um, and, and you see that I'm expecting the um, potential um, chop or tropical storm Brett to develop into a hurricane where I do expect that the light wind shear, the lack of dry air will help this storm as this continues ahead further eastward despite the stronger low level winds. So Puerto Rico and Dominican Republic, even if this doesn't develop into a tropical storm, this still could bring enhanced rainfall and gusty winds especially around the leeward islands as well so you definitely need to be aware of this and prepare in case of a hurricane um it's better to be safe than sorry so make sure to prepare as early as possible at this point even if this doesn't develop into a hurricane and we do see that i'm expecting tropical storm sydney to, um cindy to form but i expect that this trough will erode this ridge just enough for this to move out to sea but we're definitely need to gonna watch this as well since it's far from certain and will move out to sea but i uh, thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe for more hurricane season content